up in the hearts of millions of Americans as a child movie star, plays her greatest role at 17, the bride of Sergeant John Agar of the Army Air Forces. Shirley Temple may have charmed millions with her sweet demeanor, but her real-life experiences were anything but charming. Prepare to be shocked as we dive into the five most difficult stories from her life. Hollywood's darkest secrets are about to come to light. Who told you to put that black on? I guess your daddy told you to do it. Your daddy's a soldier, isn't he? Number one, when Temple was 17, producer David O. Selznick tried to assault her. Imagine being chased around an office by a powerful Hollywood producer. That's exactly what happened to 17-year-old Shirley Temple at the hands of David O. Selznick. David O. Selznick was a big name in Hollywood, and some may know him as the producer of Gone with the Wind, but he was also a predator. Anita Colby was the artistic director of Gone with the Wind. She warned Temple to be careful if she found him, Selznick, in stockings. Temple writes in her autobiography, Child Star, that this gave her the impression that casual sex might be a condition of employment with Selznick. Indeed, it seems to have been as evidenced by an encounter Temple had with him when she was 17. She also tells a hair-raising story of David O. Selznick literally chasing her around his office, expecting his due as her boss. When he came to my side of the desk, he reached out and took my hand in his. Glancing down, I saw the telltale stocking feet. I pulled free and turned for the door. But even faster, he reached back over the edge of his desk and flipped a switch that I had learned from Colby was a remote door lock. I was trapped. Like the cartoon wolf and piglet, we circled and reversed directions around his furniture again. Blessed with the agility of a young dancer and confronted by an amorous but overweight producer, I had little difficulty avoiding passionate clumsiness. Fortunately, she escaped the ordeal unscathed, but it was not the last time she would have to deal with the pigs of Hollywood. Number two, Temple almost cast as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Shirley Temple was almost cast as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Find out why she missed out on the role and what it meant for her career. As a child, Temple was an avid reader and loved The Wizard of Oz series by L. Frank Baum. In her autobiography, Child Star, she recalls being so fascinated by the stories that when her mother suggested she play Dorothy, she replied that she just wanted to meet Dorothy. In 1937, Temple learned of negotiations between Fox and MGM to loan her to MGM for the film version of The Wizard of Oz. By 1939, however, after four years as the top box office star, Temple's career began to wane. MGM eventually gave the role to Judy Garland, who was four years older and a more mature singer, better suited to the studio's vision of Dorothy. Fox also refused to release Temple from her contract, sealing Garland's casting, even though Dorothy was originally written to be younger. While this may have been one of the biggest disappointments of Temple's career, it spared her another traumatic experience. According to Judy Garland, MGM studio head Louis B. Mayer regularly harassed her, fondling her, and telling her she sang from the heart. When Garland finally confronted him, Mayer pretended to be shocked and claimed he saw himself as a father figure to her. By passing on the role, Temple inadvertently avoided the toxic environment at MGM. Number three, Temple's first husband was an abusive alcoholic. Shirley Temple's first marriage was anything but a fairy tale. Her husband, John Agar, was an abusive alcoholic, and the horrors she experienced during those years were devastating. Temple met John Agar in 1943 when she was just 15 years old. He was an Army Air Corps sergeant who later turned to acting, starring in several low-budget horror films such as Revenge of the Creature, 1955. Curse of the Swamp Creature, 1966, and Women of the Prehistoric Planet, 1967. At the age of 17, 
Temple married Agar on September 19, 1945, in front of 500 guests during an Episcopal ceremony at the Wilshire Methodist Church in Los Angeles. However, according to Temple's autobiography, things quickly went sour after the wedding. The marriage, which lasted only five years, was marked by abuse and betrayal. Agar, though handsome, was a violent alcoholic who frequently abused Temple, Sitwar Futwahar Harizand, cheated on her, and was arrested several times for drunk driving. In 1949, Temple filed for divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty. Years later, when Temple was nominated for a diplomatic post by Richard Nixon in 1969, Agar tried to sabotage her FBI background check by accusing her of being emotionally unstable. Despite his efforts, Temple overcame this dark chapter and moved forward with her life and career. Number four, MGM producer Arthur Freed exposed himself to Temple when she was 12. At the age of 12, Shirley Temple had a shocking encounter with MGM producer Arthur Freed. What he did to her left her stunned and terrified. Shirley Temple achieved international stardom with the release of Bright Eyes in 1934. Between 1935 and 1938, she was the world's top box office star, relegating Clark Gable to second to place. By 1940, however, her best films with 20th Century Fox were behind her. After two box office flops, Fox terminated her contract. That same year, at the tender age of 12, she signed with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. At the time, MGM was said to be running its child stars into the ground, forcing them to do movie after movie so the studio could capitalize on their youthful talent. Tragically, this wasn't the only way key MGM employees exploited the young star. Temple wrote in her autobiography that on her first visit to MGM, she met one of the studio's producers, Arthur Freed. During a private meeting, Freed unzipped his pants and exposed himself to her, saying, I have something made just for you. She responded by giggling nervously, and he threw her out of his office. This deplorable man would go on to produce highly successful films, such as Singin' in the Rain, The Wizard of Oz, An American in Paris, and Annie Get Your Gun. Being a known brazen pedophile did little to diminish his reputation or professional success in early Hollywood. In a later interview with Larry King, Temple confessed that this nightmarish encounter was the reason she left MGM after making one movie with them. But when it came to being exploited by movie executives, Freed was hardly the last monster on Temple's list. Number five, Temple forgave her father for financial mismanagement. Despite earning millions, Shirley Temple discovered that much of her fortune had disappeared due to her father's mismanagement of her finances. Her response may surprise you. The singing, dancing, and acting sensation retired at the age of 22, only to find that she had only $44,000 left in her bank account. Early in Temple's career at 20th Century Fox, the studio was struggling financially. Her immense popularity with the public helped turn things around, and after a legal battle, her salary increased sixfold. Her mother also received an extra $250 a week, and Temple was to receive a $15,000 bonus for each completed film, later raised to $35,000 with the funds placed in a trust. But despite being the highest paid child in the world, Temple had access to only $13 a month in spending money. At her peak, she was earning $10,000 a week. But as an adult, she discovered that although she had earned $3.2 million, she had only $44,000 left. Her father had mismanaged her finances and failed to put her earnings into a court-ordered trust fund. In her autobiography, Temple wrote about this with surprising equanimity. For reasons some may find inexplicable, I felt neither disappointment nor anger. 
Her remarkable strength may explain how she endured the many challenges that followed. Thanks for watching. If you were shocked by Shirley Temple's untold stories, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more incredible Hollywood secrets. Check out our other videos for more eye-opening stories. See you next time.